in this topic of measurement, area, perimeter, all that kind of thing, there's one big mistake that students do over and over again. I've seen hundreds and thousands of students make this same mistake and that's why I'm trying to get your full attention to emphasize to you not to make this mistake. Here's the mistake. Students learn how to calculate the area of a bunch of different shapes. By the end of this chapter, you'll have a good like seven or eight different formulas, different shapes that you'll know how to calculate the area on. You just put the right numbers in and then out it comes, right? The big mistake that many students learn is they just learn those formulas, they just memorize them, seven or eight separate objects that have nothing to do with each other. And as a consequence, after you stop using them, um, it's really hard to keep all of them in your head because you don't use them anymore, right? Here's what I want to try and communicate to you. There are not seven or eight different separate formulas. There's only really one formula, and then we look at it in lots of different angles. Let me try and explain. We've got one, two, three, four specific shapes that we've already worked out formulas for, for their area before this. Think back to before composite shapes. What was the simplest kind of shape we looked at? It was a square, very good, okay? Beside this word, square, can you just draw for me a little square just so we've got a, a visual cue? And we know, oh, the area of a square, it's the simplest kind of shape. You just look at its one dimension, its, its width or its height, it's the same number. And then what do you do with that, with that number? Say it was a square of side one, what would you do with it, Rashawn? You square it. Amazing, right? This is one of the reasons why it's so nice and easy to remember. So this is really good, fantastic. When we move past the square, we looked at rectangles. Very good. Now, the rectangle has its own formula. However, this is what I want to get across to you, right? The formula was base times height. Base times height, we looked at this. But all you're really doing is saying, well, how many squares... How many squares can I fit inside this rectangle? For example, if I divided this up, there we go. Looks to me like I can fit 12 squares in there, right? Did I count right? 12? 12 squares, right? Rather than just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, a much easier way is to just say, well, I can fit two rows, each of which have six in them. Two rows of six. Two times six base times height. So you can see it's not really a whole new formula, it's just, hey, you know that formula you saw before, just do it a whole bunch of times. What was after the rectangle? Do you remember? The, now you could go one of two ways, it doesn't really matter. Let's, um, the one I heard first was the triangle. Now, you learnt a new formula for this, right? In fact, I'm going to start writing these down. We learnt S squared for this one, we learned base times height for this one. Now, hopefully by this point, you've got the formula in your head. What is it? It's base times, height, base times, height, height, height. Base times height on two. Now, that should look familiar, shouldn't it? It's not a whole new formula. It's just when you've got a triangle, like say this, okay? You can draw a rectangle around it that has the same dimensions as this guy, like so. And can you see this triangle is exactly half of that rectangle? You know, this bit over here is the same as this, and this bit over here is the same as that. You're just taking half of it out and you're not interested in that. So that's why this is not a new formula so much as it's a different way of looking at the old formula. Okay. Now, then I think, Vishaka, I think you said the last one, which was parallelogram, very good. Now, again, we can draw one last one here. Here we go. Here's a parallelogram. Does anyone know what the formula for the parallelogram is? It's, yeah, go ahead, Enve. Base times height. Somewhat familiar, it's base, but we, we go a little more specifically. Rather than just saying base times height, we say base times perpendicular. perpendicular height. Very good, because we have to make sure we specify it's like straight up and down with a right angle. Um, the parallelogram might lean over, but you don't use this leaning over distance, you use the straight up and down distance, perpendicular height. Now, just like before, right? It looks like it's a different shape, but it's not really. You might remember this from last time. Look up for a second in case this is not familiar to you. If you draw this perpendicular height in here, and just like cut off this triangle bit, just cut it off for a second, you got this shape left over. But now I've got this green triangle in my hand, I'm gonna stick it over here. Right? What shape is that? That's a rectangle, right? That's why it's exactly the same, base times height. It's just I had to move this over 
to see it. Do you see it's not really a different formula? It's just looking at these different shapes um, through the lens of seeing the old shapes that we had. Okay, how many squares do you see in this thing? How much of a rectangle do you see in this thing? And so on. So now, and this time I'd like you to draw a little bit bigger because we're going to work on this. We're going to look at the trapezium. Now, the trapezium, we can come up with a formula for this, but I want to emphasize to you, it's not a new formula. It's just these guys come out from a different angle. Okay, so draw, draw me up please, um, and you'll need a ruler for this definitely. If you don't have one, please shoot your hand up. Draw me up a trapezium. What is the key characteristic of a trapezium? What, what does it have? It's got one, one pair of parallel sides, right? One pair of parallel sides. You might even, le even like to mark them in as parallel. And to work out the area of this thing, there are three numbers that we need. Um, just like all of these ones over here, we're going to need the height straight up and down. What, what do we call that again? Starts with a P. The perpendicular height. Very good. Now, just look carefully because I want us to draw the perpendicular height somewhere in particular. If you've drawn yours like mine, how the top edge is a bit smaller than the bottom edge, then what I want you to do is go from the left of this guy here and then draw straight down. So from the left of that top edge, and because this is the perpendicular height, just like we have been before, let's call it H. Now in all of the other shapes we were looking at over here, the other thing you needed was the base. And we are going to mark in the base on this shape, like so, B for base. Except, there's this other length up the top and it's different, right? Uh, it's not the same length, unlike with these guys. These are all the opposite lengths are the same. So instead of calling that top one B, I'm going to call it A, A and B. This is really important. A and B are the parallel sides. Anyway. Ah, not yet. We are going to come to a formula, and some of you have encountered it before. But more important than what the formula is, is where it comes from. Okay. All right, now, here's the fun bit. Just look up for a second, okay? I'm going to issue you all a challenge. You know how I said, oh, this rectangle, it's just like a bunch of squares. This triangle, it's just like a part of the rectangle. And this parallelogram, it's also like a rectangle, just dressed up differently. We can look at this trapezium through any one of these three lenses. You can turn this into a rectangle. You can do something a bit like this. Um, you can turn it into a parallelogram as well. The one I'm going to show you is how to find the triangles that are hidden inside. So my challenge to all of you is, after we're done here and we have a formula, can you find that formula through either of these paths instead. It's a bit of fun just to explore and draw and see what happens. But for now, let's see, there are triangles hiding in here and one of them makes it really easy to work out this formula that Anve is going to tell us in a second. Here's where I'd like you to get your ruler and we're going to divide this trapezium up from the top left hand corner all the way to the bottom right hand corner. Top left to bottom right. Can you do that for me and please use your ruler. Okay, now once you've done this diagonal, you can see our trapezium is now made of two triangles. Do you see that? There's a top one, which is kind of like upside down, and then this bottom one. So we can take them on one at a time. This is like our composite shapes from last time. Do you remember that? I've got each one, and I'm just going to work them out in turn. So when you have a look at this top triangle, right, we've got a formula for the area of a triangle here. What is the base of this top triangle? It's a bit funny because it's upside down, right? What's the base? It's A. Very good. And the other thing I need is its perpendicular height. What is that? It's just H. I know it's funny because H is outside, but that's how tall this skinny triangle is. So the area of that top triangle is half times the base, which is A, times the perpendicular height, which is H. H. Very good. Done. That's the first triangle. Let's have a look at the second one. It's even easier than the first. It's still a triangle, so I'm still going to use half base times height. What's the base of the second triangle? B. This is B. It's like, oh, that's the letter I usually use for the base. What's the perpendicular height of the second triangle? Also H. These triangles are the same height. 
So we've got all of our pieces. Remember when we were looking at composite shapes together, we said, okay, let's tidy this all up by saying the total area, and then we just add the two things together. Well, here's what I've got. That's the total area. And I know that looks different. It looks different, but it's just a bunch of triangles. We can tidy this up a little better though. Do you remember when we were looking at algebra um, back in that topic before we dug into geometry? We said when you've got a common factor in a bunch of terms, you can pull that common factor out. And when you pull a common factor out, what did we call it? When you're looking for a factor. It's called factorizing, right? So I'm going to factorize these two. Can someone tell me something, anything that's in common between those two? So Henry, tell me one thing. H. H. I can see H both times. Let's write that out the front. If I factorize that out, what do I get left with? There's still a half here and then an A. And then there's another half and then a B. A B. And that tells you, just by reading it out, that tells you there is a second factor I haven't got yet, which is, of course, altogether oh. a half. Thank you very much. So I'm going to go a half, H, and then what gets left on the inside? A, B. A, a plus B. And that, if you'd like to put a box around it, is the area of a trapezium. Some people like to put the H on top of the fraction, so you might just write this as H on 2. A plus B. I kind of like writing the half there because it reminds me that we came from triangles. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say another thing. Um, um, isn't one of the formulas A plus B equals C? A plus B divided by H. That's an interesting one. Maybe A plus B divided by 2? Yeah, divided by 2. Yep. So this half, you could write it underneath the A plus B, or you could write it underneath the H. You'd get the same thing so long as you have all of the pieces there. Okay? All right. So at this point, I'm going to pause. I know it does look different, but I'm trying to stress to you, it's come from over here. Some of you will say, I knew this already. That's great. I wonder if you could take the same trapezium, literally redraw the same trapezium, see if you can chop it up a different way to find a rectangle in there. Or alternatively, draw the same trapezium and chop it up another way still and see if you can find a parallelogram. Um, both of those are optional, but I challenge all of you guys to have a go at them. 